can be a, a, a discussion about who has to do the ultrasound <laughs> exam. Me, myself, I'm a radiologist. Uh, Bas is a radiologist. Uh, and we have here a physiotherapist. Physiotherapist. And a lot of more physiotherapists <laughs> here. Um, they often ask me uh, who has to do the exam. And I always give the same answer the guy or woman who's able to do it. Uh, you have very bad radiologists also. And uh, the same probably for physiotherapists. So I think the one who is able to do it should do it. But maybe uh, you think something else. Go ahead. Um, well, I, I totally agree with, M with uh, Matthew. Um, you have to, to have an ethical and, a, and a also legal uh, uh, argument that if you are able to do it, and you can do it properly, then you are allowed to do it. No whatever your background is. But you have to make yourself difficult that you can reassure that what you see is correct what you do. Otherwise, I think you're not doing it right. I don't think in an ultrasound light. I just do a little bit of ultrasound and then it's all right enough. So whatever I do, I try to do it well. So that's my main, uh, um, my main, main argument. Um, okay, so uh, what's my opinion actually? <laughs> um, that's, uh, so obviously uh, yeah. as a physiotherapist uh, I feel that um, uh, ultrasound has a huge uh, uh, benefit for, for clinical practice. Um, I see ultrasound not as uh, only making uh, uh, images and scans, but to me it's a, uh, a, uh, I, I will complement with that my my uh, clinical assessment. So I do my history taking, I do my clinical examination, and adding to that, I also do uh, the ultrasound on the positive uh, uh, outcomes of the clinical examination. And with this, uh, you have this, uh, this whole, um, the, the, the ICF framework, you um, uh, complement it with that, and uh, you will have a much better uh, Personally, I think uh, diagnosis because every domain of the ICF framework has been uh, researched well with that. So we do our clinometrics, we do our uh, ultrasound scans, we do our clinical uh, testing or anamnesis, and with that combination, so not excluding anything out of that, that combination to me excludes false positive and false negative. So it's more the combination. And I, th I feel that it really helps physiotherapy in that. Are you feeling fine with it? Do you, do you uh, participate on the machine enough? Well, um, I'm happy that you, uh, you asked this. Uh, I see some, uh, uh, maybe some skeptical looks uh, about uh, the research, but actually I welcome the, the research uh, of uh, Malus very, very much because, um, as you know, uh, I, I teach ultrasound and, and in a lot of cases, um, I see uh, people after a six-day basic course uh, having a very well uh, uh, skills to, to do so in clinical practice. Uh, but sometimes if I meet people again after a few years uh, or I receive some scans over mail, then, uh, then I also think that I ask my, myself the question, how much do you do this in, in clinical practice? And uh, I think that we can learn from, uh, from what Malouz is saying that um, yes, physiotherapists can do this, and uh, we should do this. And uh, uh, so that's to me is not a discussion, but the discussion is: uh, Do we have enough experience uh, with one scan a week, two, three scans a week? Is that enough? Uh, one basic course is that enough? Uh, um, uh, should we also do intermediate or advanced courses? So uh, I think with that we can make. Um, uh, uh, more progress uh, to work towards a system where um, education is being rewarded with accreditation points would be personally my 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 favor my my uh, opinion to do this and um, to come to a better result. Not everybody can do ultrasound, but you have to have lots of experience. Is there anybody in the audience? Yes. Yeah. So, how much 
To what level does it um, to what level does it change the outcome, which is the treatment plan? Yeah. It's actually quite the same question as uh, <laughs> as you. So I'm wondering what the others yeah. uh, have to say on that. I, well, uh, I can maybe some some different opinions, but uh, my opinion is that uh, in physiotherapy, if we do an empty can test and uh, the the test says okay, it's positive then to me, I personally don't know what's, what's wrong with the patient. I know that the patient is in pain, but I still don't know what's, what's wrong. And, and if I scan and I see uh, it's a calcification or maybe it's a partial tear or it's a total tear or it's a bursitis or a combination, to me that would affect uh, prognosis but also uh, treatment patterns or t treatment possibilities. So your treatment plan changes with either of these outcomes. So yeah. you treat a calcification different from a bursitis or from a, uh, a supraspinatus tendinitis or the 24 categories that have been discussed by Malus. Every 24 categories has a different treatment plan then. Well, uh, 24 is maybe a lot, but uh, <laughs> uh, of course it would, um, it, it would affect my clinical reasoning, my expectations for, uh, for um, or what's uh, my expectation, also the expectations of the patient, uh, explain, explain the patient much better what's wrong, um, giving more in information with that also more motivation. Uh, and yes, uh, maybe also in the training load, should I give a patient, uh, for example, a, a two kilo uh, dumbbell or one kilos, depends also on the loadability of, of certain tissue structures. But that's personally my opinion, but I don't know my colleagues. Well, well uh, I think um, everybody who uses ultrasound is, uh, does uh, have the same opinion that it is very useful. They all are very enthusiastic about it. And not just because they can have a make, make a nice picture of the moon or uh, sunshine going somewhere. They think because it's useful in their daily practice. And not only about shoal, it's about all the, uh, uh, the movement apparatus. So I think, yes, there is a use in imaging. And is the imaging leading? No, it's the part. You can also say, if I are going to have a, an orthopedic surgeon going to look at the same patient just using their hands, their outcome of their uh, uh, investigation will be quite different. So you try to improve your level of diagnostics and you just use one of the tools you have is ultrasound. So that's it. So whatever you do, if you do a, a, a physical exam, you have to do it properly. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to ask a knee surgeon to look at a shoulder, he's going to do very poorly. Uh, hello, you mentioned orthopedic surgery, and I'm an orthopedic surgeon myself, and I do the ultrasounds myself. So I don't think it matters whether you are a radiologist or a physical therapist or a orthopedic surgeon. It matters if you know how to do it. That's where your opinion is well. Thank you. And uh, how, how often do you do it? Every, every day. I have an ultrasound in my office, and I do all the patients that I see. I think it's basically a part of the physical, uh, the physical examination. Well, perhaps, me, anyway. perhaps um, um, there is a difference uh, between the professions because radiologists are used to work with each other in, in a room and they peer review each other's images. And I think physical therapists are used to work solely in their, in their clinic with one ultrasound machine and do not ask other uh, physical therapists what they think about the image. Am I right? Yes, but neither do yeah. I because I'm the only one who actually knows what I will see in the operating room. Yeah. And I'm, I'm the one looking at the things that I want to see. Mm -hmm. I don't want to report about a landscape. I want to see the landscape myself. Yes, I understand. But for the physical therapist, um, I think the learning curve uh, could improve if there were more physical therapists that used uh, peer review. Like, like Bianchi this morning said, uh, when I asked him about the learning curve, he, he came up with the, the many years of experience. Um, there are other conditions to be a good sonographist, for instance, uh, feedback. So in, in your case, you have your own feedback on the OR. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but in, in the practice of a physiotherapist or a radiologist, it, it, it 
it's very uh, nice for your learning curve. It shortens your learning curve when you have experienced colleagues who teach you. Yes, but in the end, we are all somewhere on the learning curve. So I don't think you have to say you have reached the end of the learning curve. You're always there. Yeah. Of course, but it can shorten, it can help you. Sure. But if I'm going to look at the perspective of a patient as a client, I would like to go to someone who knows what he's doing and not in the beginning of his learning curve. I didn't understand. Well, um, if, if, to be honest, if, my, if I said my mother to a, to a physician or to whatever, I would like to that what he tells me that he's correct and that he is uh, good enough to know what he's saying. So if, you're, if I'm going to tell my orthopedic surgeon he's got a rotator cuff tear, he knows that I'm qualified enough so that he can operate on my report. If he's going to my colleague who does an only abdominal radiology, he won't trust him. So you, your reliability has to be approved at a certain point to be taken care in clinical, daily clinical care. But I also believe in teamwork because I learn from my orthopedic surgeons and he surely does also learn from me. Um, to, uh, I think uh, we all agree on the fact that uh, uh, ultrasound is uh, not uh, operator uh, dependent but more experience uh, dependent. Uh, to be the devil's advocate um, and to uh, stir a little bit uh, in the, the fire. Um, do the radiologists think that uh, physio is equipped to do uh, all um, uh, scans of pathologies or do you think, well, maybe the physio is more for screening uh, to, to look at the bigger pathologies and that smaller pathologies maybe should be referred to the to hospital, to, to the radiologist. I don't know if one of the radiology colleagues can comment on that. That's a difficult question because uh, <laughs> you ask me now to uh, say something about apples and pears and uh, you have, uh, you can't say the physiotherapist and the radiologist. It's, uh, it differs per patient as you are sitting here. And, uh, if it's even per day, how you're feeling that day, and how eager you are, and how experienced you are, and I can go on with this. So um, you c that's why I said somebody should do it who's able to do it. And the more you do it uh, every day, the better you, you get, even especially when you get some feedback from others. And uh, how many uh, scans do, uh, a, a question to Bas, um, uh, how many scans do you make in a week? Oh, uh, to be honest, I don't have much. If I go to, uh, if I do my, private, my practice, we've got uh, five to six ultrasound rooms and uh, we perform around between 120 to 140 ultrasounds a day. And half the day, I will be 70% uh, will be uh, musculoskeletal ultrasound. If I do my sonographers, they have to work at least for, um, for a few days a week. And 60-70% uh, they will have to perform ultrasound. So the people who do ultrasound with me, mm -hmm. my sonographers, are very experienced. And I asked them this week, so what do you think, when are you safe enough, comfortable enough for yourself to perform ultrasound routinely at a level you think is for yourself ex uh, uh, acceptable? And they all said, well, uh, I do a three years training. I have an ultrasound course for a year, and in that year I go one day a week. And then I need at least a few years to train at my radiology department to feel comfortable. So learning curve and numbers are very, very important. Next to that, uh, I think what Mathieu says, uh, the more I do, the more I see things which I never heard of, and also the more I see what I can't see. Mm -hmm. So um, I never believe that you can do see a patient and you say, well, this patient is light, it's easy. I only do easy patients because they're not recognizable. Yeah, I understand. And um, how many, uh, a question for uh, Mathieu Rutte, uh, do you still do courses or training? Uh, you, you, I know you're a teacher, but do you also follow courses? Or do you, does your staff uh, uh, follow a lot of courses? Yeah, we have, we have um, 16 radiologists, of which five are musculoskeletal radiologists, and they are obliged to follow every year some MSK courses. Yeah. And 
me, myself, of course, also. This and question over there. I have no question. Oh. I have no question, uh, but more or less maybe a statement. Um, uh, musculoskeletal ultrasound uh, is within reach of physiotherapists. Um, they use it, some every day, some more or less. Um, and in primary care, I'm speaking on um, primary care now, that's why the setting I'm working in, um, we as physios have uh, no uh, imaging available, uh, easy available, but uh, sonography. So it, to me, my experience, it helps me a lot in decision making, in, in, in changing my uh, approach tre on treatment. Uh, knowing that what I'm seeing mm -hmm. is not always what I think I see. Uh, I think we have to work in, in, uh, on, a, on a way to make sure that um, the education level of physios performing ultrasound is, comes at a higher level. Mm -hmm. There is a good, um, people who do uh, ultrasound uh, have connections with radiologists in hospitals. Uh, so they can learn from them and their experience that we create something like that instead of talking well physios must not do that or uh, uh, I think it's there it's available it helps but we have to improve the quality and that's and that's my concern um, uh, because a lot of physios is going to do sonography but it's not always the quality is not always guaranteed Mm -hmm. And that's something we, w we have to work on, yeah. and uh, that's my statement. I think we statement. all agree. Yeah, yeah. I f fully agree on that. And I think it's uh, really important, uh, especially because I think that due to technolo technological advancements, uh, you will see that uh, MSK ultrasound is being more available in clinical practice. Uh, tests has been, have been done with uh, uh, iPhone, smartphone-like structures, Google Glass, uh, upper right image uh, in uh, your eye, glass on, uh, I, f I feel the patient, I'm working with the patient. So I think that uh, uh, healthcare professionals, they are going hybrid in the future. And to be prepared for that, I think that it's important to take ultrasound in the uh, curricula of uh, the Bachelor of Science. Um, uh, I use it personally in my anatomy lectures. Um, there are a few students in the top uh, who can uh, state that. Um, and uh, students have to be trained increasingly in, in this and also um, um, yeah, as, a, as, a, as a basic professional. And uh, one other small comment on that is that um, I'm in a group who were thinking about how uh, the bachelor uh, physiotherapy program is developing in the next 10 years. And expectations are that uh, physio is going to be the master of science uh, uh, educational program. So we were transferring from uh, bachelor to master of science. With that, uh, maybe also new um, uh, products or new responsibilities come into scope. I think about the extended scope physiotherapist in England and the UK. And um, yeah, so I, I feel it's, it's really a thing where we should keep on doing, but I fully agree with you. We have to work on uh, our uh, agreement or our confidence or uh, our diagnostic accuracy. Yeah. But having, having said this, you, you have to add something else and that's leg legislation. Because uh, when you're going to use and make these images, as well as radiologists, we, we, we are obliged to uh, keep them in a map for 15 years, all the pictures, and they will ask the same for you. So they have, they have to come a system, for instance in the Netherlands, where you can upload your own uh, pictures and can have them for 15 years, a kind of a packs in the air. Yes, I think that's a, in, in, in the big issue because you're, you're, it's illegal, you're obliged, I think it's even 20 years now, uh, to change your reports. But also, in my daily practice, if I look at an ultrasound, an MR, I always look what has been the history, the imaging history of the patient. So if you're going to divide all your images, I think it's not in the best interest of the patient itself. So you have to try to combine it wherever it is made, in this first or second uh, healthcare system. But you have to try to make the the patient data around the patient instead of dividing it between several parts. If you have the system, then it's a small step to second reading, and that's a quality issue again. 
Okay, so can I, I can ask you a question, Mark? Um, at the rheology, now our training as urologists is divided in super specialization. So you don't have almost a more general radiologist, you have a musculoskeletal radiologist, a memory whatever. Is it going to be the same in your therapy, do you think? Should you do it? Um, well, um, you're asking uh, uh, a, uh, a super specialist uh, at the moment because uh, my main interest is, is in a shoulder joint. So I'm, I really f uh, think that, uh, that this is also how physiotherapists should work. Uh, I think that, uh, at least in, in, in ultrasound, because I think that the human body is so en enormously complex that uh, how can you know everything? So uh, in the courses I always tell, once you're ready, pick one or two joints, make sure that you know them very well before proceeding to the next one. And um, no, yeah, you can't know everything, so I fully agree. But only, um, I mean, also if you can compare now, a lot of physiotherapists just try to do more oncology patients or have different kind of groups of patients as well, not only just anatomy based, but also on speciality based. Um, speciality based, how, how do you mean? No, because you've got physiotherapists who work more with cardiac patients, ah, okay. who work more with oncology patients, so they have different patient groups with different problems. Yeah, no, no, yeah that's, that's, uh, that's one thing, yeah, so uh, speci specialization is important for, for, um, for clinical practice, so <laughs> yes, I agree. Are there any questions or remarks from the audience? Because otherwise, I would like to move on for the sake of time. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you.